So you've spoken a lot about the kind of amazing work that you're all doing to try and raise awareness about what's happening here, but my question is that there seems to be a real lack of public knowledge about what's happening in these places. And so what is it that's stopping you know, large amounts of the mainstream media from talking about this? What, what, why isn't this constantly you know, in the news? And I, and I suppose it's a, in a way it's a, a kind of quite an innocent question, but what are the obstacles that you face in getting this campaign sort of on, you know, on the front pages of the newspapers every day? Because surely it should be. Absolutely, it should be. Um... I mean, we're in, we're in a time where the rhetoric and the narrative is absolutely anti-immigration, which is confused with refugee and asylum. We're, you know, post-Brexit, the racism is shot through the roof. It's just not kind of what the mainstream media want on their front pages. Would you like to say? Yeah, um, What I would just say is I think it is starting to break through the mainstream media. Um, you know, Channel 4 did a fantastic undercover documentary in Yarl's Wood last year. You know, it has been covered by The Guardian, The Telegraph, Times. Um, we've been on Sky, we've been on the BBC. So it is breaking through. I think the problem that we have is that you constantly need to find a new angle. And while ever it's just the same thing kind of going on again and again and again, it's not news, um, you know, and it's outrageous that it happens, but you, we're constantly having to look for a new angle, a new way to make editors care, because otherwise it's just, you know, oh, that's been going on for ages, what's, what's the story here? Um, you know, so for example, in October, I worked with The Guardian on a new story because we had noticed a particular increase very, very suddenly in the number of women who were being handcuffed for hospital appointments. Um, and we'd only noticed it anecdotally, but a lot of women were coming to me and saying, I'm being told I have to be handcuffed for a hospital appointment. You know, I've got a serious long-term health condition. I've been to lots of hospital appointments before where they haven't handcuffed me, and now they're handcuffing me. Um, and so, you know, that was an angle that got The Guardian interested in, okay. What's changed here? Why is this suddenly a new policy? Um, but it, you know, it is always just you know, every time a new report comes out, there's a hook. Every time something changes at a policy level, there's a there's a bit of a hook. Um, you know, part of the reason that we focused particularly around Mother's Day this year on pregnant women was because we felt, you know, it was an issue that a lot of people could relate to as awful as that is, on a more personal level that they could relate to survivors of sexual violence because everyone has either been pregnant or knows someone who's been pregnant. And so a lot of the particularly conservative MPs we were talking about, you'd say, oh, there are pregnant women in detention and they're, you know, they don't have access to a midwife whenever they need it. Or they, you know, they're missing scans and they're not getting the nutrition that they need. And people would go, oh, God, that's awful. Um, you know, so it was easier in a way to generate interest around that. And we worked with Mumsnet on a campaign around that where we had some of their bloggers talking about their own experiences of pregnancy and, and reading out the stories of women who've been detained while pregnant. So it is, you know, it's something where we're, we're trying, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm doing my best. Um, but it is just about, you know, tapping into where the interest is and where you can find sympathy. You know, the other problem that we have had, you know, particularly last summer and last autumn was we were talking to the media about refugee women in the UK and Yarl's Wood and everybody just wanted to talk about Calais and Syrian refugees and every time I tried to pitch an article to an editor they said, are you working with any Syrians? And so again, the, the kind of news agenda does make it difficult sometimes to break through on that. Um, but I, I do think we're getting there. So, yeah. But if you see an article about it, please share it as widely as possible, is what I would say. Um, because they are out there. They just, yeah. Just to briefly add to that, the other thing is, um, I noticed that in your question you focused on kind of the mainstream media. And I think it's important to acknowledge that 
increasingly people get their news from sources that aren't necessarily the mainstream media and they absorb news in different ways. So that's part of the reason why films like the ones we saw tonight can be so useful in promoting campaigns like this because people are using social media, they're using Facebook, they're using Twitter and a short film like that you can share and have it viewed millions and millions of times um, in a way that print media traditionally isn't being circulated in the same way. So, so that's the other element of it as well. And like, like the articles also, sharing videos I think can be incredibly powerful. Um, so yeah, brilliant question. Thanks. Can I go?